SBA. This is our online service for December 4th, 2022. I do want to welcome you to come and join us in the sanctuary. We will have a short skit this week in the sanctuary prior to this same sermon, but it's kind of tied together. You won't get to see the skit today, but you will get the gist of the service online if you can. But I welcome you to join us at 1045 in the sanctuary. Please join me now in the call to worship. A shoot soon comes from Jesse Stump, and a branch shall spring forth from its roots. Rejoice, rejoice, all God's children. Let the people give God praise. A leader soon comes who will lift the poor with the righteous all around his waist. Rejoice, rejoice, all God's children. Let all the people give God's praise. A child soon comes from an innocent place. With wisdom and might, he'll lead the way. Rejoice, rejoice, all God's children. Let all the people of God praise God. And our scripture today comes from the first chapter of Luke, starting with the 26th verse. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born and will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through the hearing of these words, open us up so that we may come to love you with all our heart, with all our minds, with all our soul, and with all our strength. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Her name is Elijah. It's, it's Elia. Elia. Get that straight one way name. Her name is Elia, which means higher exalted. It's a perfect name, as soon you will see. When Elia was born, she weighed just 12 ounces and tipped to the palm of her mother's hand. She arrived about four months early and was growing too slowly in her mother's womb. When she entered the world, she was the second smallest surviving baby ever to be born in Great Britain. Before her delivery, the doctors warned her mother that her daughter only had a 10% chance of surviving. They recommended termination, but she and her husband said, no, no way at all. They had been trying to have a baby for up to 10 years and the parents of this little girl were desperate for their own little baby. But against all odds, Eliyahu was born and showed an amazing fighting spirit. After a few days on the life support machine and four months in the neonatal unit, she made her way home, Christmas with her family. She's a miracle baby, one who has been lifted up as highly exalted by her grateful mother and father. But although this story is one that warms the heart, and one that brightens the soul. The truth is, from Japan to Germany to the United States, we're talking about a baby bust now, not a baby boom. People are having fewer and fewer babies. So why? How come? Well, there's lots of different theories, but just imagine how impoverished we would be if Mary had not let the baby Jesus come into her life. Because in today's scripture verse, it begins with the visit of the angel Gabriel to the virgin named Mary, the young woman who was engaged to Joseph, a hometown boy, a boy with a decent job, a decent family, a decent home, and the angel visit is alarming. And you can understand that it would be alarming. But the announcement is astonishing, and quite frankly, Mary deems it to be impossible. You will conceive in your womb, 
and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. This is not necessarily good news to a young woman already waiting for her wedding day. Any other bride simply would have left the toasters and the towels on the gift table, picked up and taken off a few days to go think it over and mill it around and decide what she wants to do. And while sadly, it's not that unusual today for the bride to waddle down the church aisle, six months pregnant, to be received by some hapless fellow who put her in this condition. But it was unusual then, and Mary could not have been a happy prospect. But Mary is receptive to this good news that Gabriel tells her. He says, his name will be Jesus, which means he will save. He will save. Similar to Eliana, meaning high and exalted, Jesus is described as one who will be great and will be the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him a throne of his ancestor David. Gabriel predicts that he will reign over the house of Jacob and will rule an everlasting kingdom. Mary ponders this, but she doesn't ponder it too long. And she gives a great response. She says, Here I am. The servant of the Lord will be with you. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to thy word. Here I am. The servant of the Lord, let it be according with me according to thy word. Child is accepted, and the course of human history is changed forevermore. What a difference a baby makes, both to Mary at least. But do you really want this baby that we're waiting for at Christmas time? Are we really ready to welcome this child? Not into the world, but into our world. It's a little bit different than into the world. Or are we more inclined upon hearing the claims that the child puts upon us? to hit the road and say, let's get out of here. We don't need this right now. There's too many requirements. There's too many challenges. The challenge for us today is to consider whether we are open and receptive to the coming of Jesus into our lives. It's so significant that Mary said yes and was willing to risk her reputation in order to follow the Son of God as he enters into the world. She didn't worry about her engagement. She didn't worry about her social standing, her health, her long-term financial security. Instead, she said yes to a baby who would grow up to be the savior of the world and provide a way for us to be cared for eternally. So the question is, are you willing to be this open and this receptive, this faithful to the promises of God that this baby brings? Are we willing to embrace the Christ child and let the child make a difference in our lives? We say yes to this baby. We find ourselves forever changed. Forever changed. We'll become people who have Christ at the very center of who we are. Just as Mary received the life of Jesus into the deepest and most intimate part of herself, we'll turn into people who can say along with Mary, Here I am, Lord, servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I'm going to say a few statements, and I invite you to end those statements with, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. The next few days are going to be tough ones, and maybe good ones also with days of celebration. They're also going to be filled with stress. What a great time this morning to say, Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. How about when you're traveling and visiting with relatives, and the kids are in the back seat bickering with each other about who is who has the most room. What a great time to say, Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. Very late Christmas Eve, when the presents aren't yet wrapped, and some assembly required gifts come in a bag filled with 200 pieces. What a great time to say, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Then you get back at work, and your boss and your employees are cutting corners, and you're feeling pressure to behave unethically. What a great time to say, Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. Kids back at school, and others make fun of you because you aren't dressed in the perfect style, or someone pushes you to do something you don't believe in. What a great time to say, Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. Out in the community, when people show disregard for the homeless, 
or disdain for immigrants, or distrust towards people with different beliefs, what a great time to say, here I am, Lord, servant of the Lord. You can say it out of habit. You can say it out of comfort. You can say it as a way to enter into a connection with God. You can say it as a prayer to help you do the things that you know God wants you to do. Anytime is a great time to say, here I am, Lord, a servant of the Lord. Because when we say these words, we're making a commitment to be open, to be receptive, to be faithful to the promises and the priorities of God. We're showing a willingness to allow a Christ child to be born into us today, into our world. Yes, the baby can make a big difference, especially when we allow Jesus to guide our lives. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we humbly come before you this day so thankful for the Christ child, so thankful for an opportunity to serve you and to worship you. We pray for all the lost and lonely. Guide us to be vehicles of love to each and every person we meet. We pray this and whatever else we pray as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please bow your heads and receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he guide you out as a servant of the Lord always. And may you feel the peace, the peace that passes all understanding.